So we've talked in previous books and uh, previous uh, episodes um, about how an exchange traded order book works. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also talked about the difference between exchange traded and over the counter assets. So following up with our Ford Fiesta example, uh, we're going to continue on how Ford Fiestas would trade in an over the counter market. Okay. So again, before I go into specifics, there are advantages of over the counter when it comes to uh, the possibilities of personalizing contract sizes or, or, or variations in the asset classes. So in my exchange rate example on Ford Fiestas, I've talked about totally comparable Ford Fiestas in every single regard. And that, that's important because otherwise you have to adjust for differences in the, in the either the quality or the specifications of the Ford Fiesta when it comes to the price. And it's very difficult to create a single order book. Now, if you had kind of four Fiesta, like turbo Ford Fiesta or two year old Ford Fiestas and five year old Ford Fiestas or whatever, then perhaps an over the counter market is better because you can adjust for that. Sure. But for now, we're just going to pretend because uh, uh, there are very large markets who are completely play Manila, like say the, the global spot um, FX market, where a dollar is a dollar is a dollar. There's no kind of five-year-old or three-year-old dollars, it's, it's a dollar. Uh, so again, we've got market participants. So these are people who want to buy for Fiestas. And then perhaps we have sellers. These are like used car dealers who are, you know, we've got the Milton Keynes. <laughs> Uh, we've got the Isle of Wight and just, you know, then, um, you've got, which, what's your favorite place, mate? Well, in terms of car dealerships, it's like Manchester Hertfordshire. So, so you know, Manchester Hertfordshire, okay, well, fine. Yeah, sorry, just Manchester. Yeah, who gives it, you know, no. <laughs> it's fine, Ali, it's just an example, okay? So, so, so these guys sell, these guys sell for Fiestas, these, you know, the, these are like a hundred guys each who want to buy for Fiestas. So there isn't a single market, there's not an exchange where everybody buying Ford Fiestas goes to buy it. There are multiple of them, right? So, and uh, now these guys might be trading cars from each other to kind of manage stock. So they could also be buyers. Yeah. Uh, these guys, I mean, there's a, there's a private market between them and they might clear transactions there or there. And then there's, of course, you know, uh, newspapers describing the stuff and so on. So there's a whole boatload of information in different places around the price of a Ford Fiesta. <clears throat> and there's a role for somebody collating all that information. So when it comes to the global spot foreign exchange market, somebody said, hey, we live in the internet, so we could basically have a website that posts out all the live prices at which price is clear. And then people have an interest in reporting when they've cleared the trade. So the likes of, uh, say, Reuters, uh, I guess, and Bloomberg uh, take on those roles. Basically, they, they, there's, a, there's a value in that information. So what they would do would, would be to have some sort of aggregation software to give a unified view of what's going on in this dispersed, heterogeneous uh, Ford Fiesta market at one point in time. And then there's one buzzword that sort of took, took hold, which was to say, we're going to create an electronic communications network, which basically informs everyone about what, what goes on. And then at some point, somebody would have said, whoa, you know, this is great, but it's a bit like Google Flights. I can't really buy the flights, uh, so it would be so much more useful if I could actually just enter my credit card to, to buy my Ford Fiesta with the, with the ECN. So that's where um, gradually the ECNs became not just informational, so there wasn't just a price stream, but also transactional. Uh, and then over time, there'd be a, a meshed network of who gives credit to whom. So we talked about the delivery versus payment situation. Yeah. Well, you know, it takes time for a messenger to send the car keys from this guy who's just bought to that guy. So there would be credit relationships where, and again, you know, and we're, just, we're just going to flip because the, the Ford Fiesta example has really exhausted its utility. So we're now not, we're not trading Ford Fiestas anymore. We're now trading the Euro dollar, so which is something completely fungible and uh, that, can, that can be transported. So if these are, instead of, car dealers and people that these are like wholesale banks and there are 15 of them you know they all know where to find each other if somebody defaults on a payment so there's a there's a um, network of, of trust of what goes on here so this is kind of the trust network 
And the trust network is the, the global interbank market. So these are all people who all know each other and who importantly have enough credibility to extend credit to, to each other. So if this guy says, yeah, I'm going to send you, you know, I'm sending you a million bucks for one, you know, uh, million pounds for 1.2 uh, million dollars, then they shake hands and the deal's done, even though the dollars and the pounds haven't actually hit each other's accounts. Yeah. Okay. So th there's that credit element there. And then there are, you know, this we're going to make, trans you know, this is a bank now. We're not, we don't want the fixed analysis here. This is this is for, for the real guys. And then at some point, we get these retail nobodies who <laughs> basically want to start trading with this. So they need a price to understand where things go. So uh, at some point, the ECN will stream out the prices to them so they know what the price is. And if they want to trade with it, then, well, they need a a broker who gets credit to tap into this network, but I guess that's a subject for another for another video. So yeah, if anybody has any questions on this one, we'd love to repeat until we nail the explanation so that everybody comment on the video, comment on the video until everybody who talks about an ECN actually knows what an ECN is, like, which would be quite useful. Because a lot of people tend to use ECN and SPP interchangeably. And even yeah, it's like talking about octopus and octopus and uh, ra razor blade or something. It's kind of what the fuck. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, it's got nothing to do.